Fast charging. A lot of us use it every day, but chances are we've never really given it a second thought, you know, never really thought about how it works. So what goes into the fast charging technology that we all use and what differentiates each implementation? Well, that's exactly what we're going to find out in today's video. Hey guys, Ash here and you're watching FTJ by C4 eTech. Let's get started. Now, when talking about batteries and charging technology, there are also a few terms that you should know about, namely volts, amps, and watts. Let me explain these terms with a common analogy. Imagine there is a water pipe with water flowing through it. The water pipe would be your wire in this instance, and the water flowing through it would be electricity. In this pipe, the amount of water flowing can be called as current, and current is measured in amperes or amps in short. Now, in order for this water to move, you need pressure in the pipe, and similarly, in order for current to move, you need voltage. Voltage is the rate in which the current flows. If there isn't any pressure in the pipe, water cannot flow, can it? Now, similarly, without voltage, current cannot flow through a wire or cable. Now, you have water, you have pressure, so you've got water moving and coming out of the other end of the pipe. Similarly, if you've got current and voltage, you get power. And this power is me measured in wattage or watts in short. Since power is a product of voltage and current, an increase in any one of them leads to an increase in overall power output as well. Now that's the basics. Now this is why we multiply the volts and amps and get the total watts. Now, now that the basics are taken care of, let's now get into why all of this matters in the context of fast charging. Now in order to charge a battery faster, you can either push more voltage with the same amount of current or push more current with the same amount of voltage to the battery. Now both implementations have their own advantages and disadvantages which we will get into in a little bit. The combination of voltages and current are the primary building blocks of every fast charging technology out there and it is what differentiates one implementation from another. For example, let's compare Qualcomm's Quick Charge 3 and OnePlus's dash charging technologies. A standard wall adapter generally charges your phone at 5 volts 2 amps, that is 10 watts. With Quick Charge 3, Qualcomm increases the voltage and charges your phone at up to 12 volts and 1.5 amps, so the total output is 18 watts compared to the standard 10 watts that most chargers can do. With Quick Charge, Qualcomm has chosen to increase the voltage and keep the amount of current the same or even reduce it down a little bit at higher voltages. On the other hand, with Dash Charge, OnePlus sticks to keeping the voltage at a maximum of 5 volts and instead chooses to push more current. Dash Charge can charge a phone at up to 5 volts, 4 amps, which comes to around 20 watts of total power being pushed into the battery. Now these are clearly two different approaches and now you might ask, why doesn't Qualcomm do what OnePlus did with Dash Charge? Well, in order to push more current, OnePlus has designed proprietary hardware without which Dash Charge just will not work. You have a much more beefier power adapter that regulates all the current and voltages and you also have a Dash Charge specific cable which is thicker than your standard uh, USB cable. Quick Charge, however, is designed to be more easily implemented across a multitude of devices and therefore sticks close to the USB power delivery standards as much as possible, meaning it will work across a regular USB cable and will require only a compatible adapter. OnePlus also shifts a bunch of circuitry from the phone to the wall adapter itself, and there is a reasoning behind it. In traditional fast charging methods, the phone heats up quite a bit, but by moving some of the circuitry from the phone over to the adapter, OnePlus manages to keep the heat away from the phone, which in turn allows you to charge the device more efficiently and more effectively. Oppo's VOOC and Huawei Supercharge also choose to push more current just like OnePlus's Dash Charge. And just like Dash Charge, they also require th thicker cables and more beefier proprietary wall adapters. The other charging standards we see such as Motorola's TurboCharge, Samsung's Adaptive Fast Charging, now these are all usually based on USB power delivery or quick charge standards and sometimes they're just direct rebrands, you know, just marketing terminology. Now all this is pretty watered down and there is a lot more to charging technology but this should give you a basic understanding of how fast charging works and what differentiates each of these standards. I hope you learned something new from this video and uh, do you want to see more of these kind of videos? Let me know in the comments below. I guess it's time I bid you adieu. Uh, what did you think about this video? Liked it? Hated it? Thumbs up, thumbs down based on that. If you've not see seen either of these videos, hit that. If you've not subscribed, subscribe. 
ring that bell if you haven't yet, please. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You're watching FTJ by C4 Retech, and I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.